What's up, Saints? You know... Nice. Being a minority in the United States doesn't really hold the best stigma. African American history, for example, holds hardship, struggle, and lots of poverty. And for a long time, even still today, we struggle to fit in society. And as history progressed, the answer was very clear on what us as minorities should do to fit in society. Go to school. This was especially true in my household. It was either A, go to school, B, become a janitor. I'm either gonna make bank and become a doctor or a lawyer, or I'm gonna live in a shoebox behind a dumpster mopping up floors. Now, I'll be fair, okay? I'm a fair guy, and after all, I do have a cat. Oh, I'm sorry. Both my parents growing up had a really difficult life, it, it, especially by most kids' standards today. I'd say most of the kids today have it pretty easy, but my parents' life was full of just hardship and they had to go through so much just to make so little a lot of the time. They both worked extremely hard to give me the life that I have today and I would by no means take that for granted and a lot of it was due to them going to school. My mom's a doctor and my dad's a college professor and I'd be an ignorant dum-dum to say what they did for me was useless. That's stupid. The previous generation was huge on working hard, building yourself, having like five jobs, and reach the goal that you want to be. And nine times out of ten, you need a college to do that, especially if you're a minority. And it's not just minorities, and it's not just the older generation, it's us too. This generation is so fixated on the hustle and grind mentality, living the American dream. <laughs> Disgusting. I'll probably do a video on that in the future, honestly. There's so much pressure in society to get a job, get a degree, and make that dough. There's actually a really good video on how toxic the hustle mentality is by Je Jefferson Beth Beeth. I'm sorry, I'll leave it in the description. But hey, I get caught up in this too. You got high school teachers breathing down your neck. What college are you going to? And college teachers breathing even harder. <laughs> What are your plans after graduation? Ah! And it didn't help that a lot of like employers and teachers would harass me about my GPA. <laughs> because my GPA was always like below average. I think it was like a 2.8 when I graduated high school. But now, <laughs> now I have my intellect. I got that 2.9 GPA in college. I was always really good at classwork, homework, and projects, but when, when it came to tests, even when I studied, <laughs> it was like my brain takes a vacation. Employers and teachers would look at my GPA and they would be like, excuse me, sir, come, come here. Let me talk to you for a second. Did you know that the average college graduate makes $500,000 in one year? But also, did you know the average high school graduate lives in a shoebox, then dies? And then with this mentality, I was like, okay, all right, I, I gotta plan my future out really good. I, I'm good at designing, so I have to build my business and I'll make enough revenue and th this, will, this will all come to pass. And... But then I read James 4, 13 through 15, which says, Look here, you who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Now, I know what you're thinking. So Jordan, are you telling me that I shouldn't worry about having a stable job and a steady income? No! Of course I'm not saying that. Not at all. The Bible is. Paul even says in 1 Timothy, So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. You're not gonna get to heaven and Jesus be like, Hey Jesus, why, uh, why didn't John Doe make it to heaven? Well, my child, you should know the answer to that. Because he didn't try, try to, to make, make enough, enough money. money. All right, exactly. I forgot. And you don't have to be rich to have this mentality. I'm a broke college student with a cat, and I still do. Don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. So is there anything wrong with being rich and wealthy? Not at all. Abraham, Job, Solomon were just like swimming in cash. And is there anything with working hard? 
God forbid. Even in 2 Thessalonians, it actually says, even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. But the question is, is there anything wrong with having a low-end job like a janitor? No, of course not. And would I personally become a janitor even though I'm in my last semester of college? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Shoot, if God tells me to, I wanna be there 100%. I mean, wouldn't you? I wouldn't like that, but I mean, he, he's God, what am I gonna say? You know, that's what it means to deny yourself and pick up your cross, putting away what you want. So the question isn't really, you know, do you love wealth and do you love your ambitions? The question really is, what are you willing to give up for God?